I'm Scott Mansell and welcome to Driver 61's University Series. In the next few tutorials we're going to be taking a look at how to maximise the braking and mid and exit phases of a corner. Today's tutorial is going to concentrate on the braking phase and how to carry as much speed as possible into a corner. So what do we mean when we're talking about these four phases? Well we've briefly gone over them in tutorials previously but we're going to go over in much more detail in the next four tutorials. So the braking phase is the point at which you get on the brakes and it actually overlaps itself, especially if you're trail braking, into the corner entry phase. The corner entry phase is where we bring the car in towards the apex, we may still be on the brakes and we're gently bringing the car in towards the clipping point of the corner. The mid phase is where we transition from the braking to uh, the accelerator and we bring the car into the apex and the exit phase is when we pick up the accelerator properly we allow the car to push towards the outside of the corner so as I mentioned we've gone over these points already in previous tutorials but we're really going to look in detail as to how to maximize each particular phase so we can carry as much speed through the corner and reduce lap time so you've probably heard the phrase at the racetrack, go in slow and come out fast. Well, while this is very true because any extra speed that you carry coming out of a corner, you continue to carry down the following straight. And in terms of reducing lap time, this really helps. However, having said that, you still don't want to over slow the car as you enter the corner. You don't want to be below the grip threshold as you enter the corner with some grip to spare because the more you slow the car, the more you're gonna to have to accelerate it as you come out the corner again. And this is often a, a big problem that we have with amateur drivers where they'll stop the car too much as they go into the corner and they'll never recover the speed as they exit out onto the next straight. Entering a corner is technically the most difficult part of driving on track because you have a lot of balance um, and a lot of technique to to really carry that speed into the corner, which is why we're gonna concentrate on it today. So here's a common mistake for a, a good amateur driver. They'll tend to generally brake slightly too early, but their deceleration will be almost as quick as mine. So they're using almost all of the grip available for braking and they're decelerating at the proper rate. But then as they slow the car and they come in towards the apex, they'll realize that they're actually going slightly too slow for this corner or they're decelerating too quickly for this corner. They'll then come off the brakes a little bit too early when really they should be trailing the brakes in and sometimes they'll even get back on the throttle before the apex too much to accelerate back up to the speed that they should be doing. Now this means that all the inputs are kind of out of sync and the car's pitch will be moving around at points where it shouldn't be moving around in the corner. This affects the weight transfer, which then obviously affects the overall grip of the car, which means they can't carry the speed in and they can't carry then the speed out of the corner. So not only have they lost a bit of time on the brakes because they brake too early, they then reduce the actual ultimate grip level in the corner and they can't come out the corner as quick as a professional driver might. So in this diagram, we are comparing the braking and the entry phase of a professional driver and a good amateur driver. The um, red writing is the speed of the professional driver and the blue writing here and here is the speed of the amateur driver. So we can compare the speeds at various points through the corner and see how that might affect the speed as we go through and come out of the corner in question. So as you can see, the braking point for the blue driver, for the amateur driver, is a little bit earlier than the professional driver who is braking just here. So at this point, both cars are doing 120 miles an hour, where the amateur driver gets on the brake with the same force as the professional who gets on the brakes a little bit later, by which time the amateur driver is doing 115 miles an hour. So he is five miles an hour slower. As we come through the braking phase, both drivers are decelerating at the same rate. They're both using all of the grip available for braking. And you can see the professional is at 100 miles an hour with the amateur at 95. At the turning point, again, we still have the same five miles an hour difference 
the professional is doing 70 and the amateur 65. And again, as we come into the corner, the both drivers begin to pick up the throttle. And again, we see the five miles an hour difference at the apex and then continuing out of the corner. Now, the point that we're trying to make here is that if you get on the brakes too early and you, you decelerate well, you're never ever going to make that time back up again. It's just impossible. So it's really important that you get on the brakes at the right point and continue that technique all the way through the braking and entry phase of the corner. So how do we go about carrying as much speed as possible into a corner? Well, it's not as simple as simply telling you to brake later. If it was that easy, people like me wouldn't have a job. Um, the problem is, is that a lot of amateur drivers have a mental barrier about how much speed they can carry into a corner and at the apex of a corner. They don't think the car will go around the corner as quickly as it actually will. So the first thing to do, as I've spoken about already in our vision tutorial, is to make sure that your vision is good. And by good, I mean broad and long. So you're looking into the corner way before you ever get there. It gives yourself a lot of time to understand where the car needs to be and where the car is going, and you can visualize your line through that corner. This helps everything. It helps your racing line, it helps you carry the right speed into the corner, and it will just make you more consistent as well. The other thing you can do is to jump in the car with a driver coach if you have one available. Be a passenger at this point. Let the driver coach, the professional driver, drive. You'll get a great idea of the maximum forces that you can carry through the corner and a little bit of advice on racing line. But once you understand how much g-force, how much force you can carry through the corner, then when you get in the car yourself to drive again, you'll understand the capabilities of the car. So when I'm building up my entry speed into a corner, which as I've mentioned, is the most difficult part of driving on track, I'll try to carry more and more speed each lap, be as efficient as possible. Make sure you're conscious of actively trying to carry more speed into the corner. And I just take a little bit more speed in, a little bit more speed in each lap until it starts to affect my exit in a negative way. So once I feel that it's, I'm carrying too much speed into the corner and then I can't pick up the throttle where I want to pick up the throttle, I bring my entry speed back a little bit so I'm maximizing then both the entry speed and the exit speed where we're getting on the throttle at the right point and carrying the speed out of the corner. So that's all for today's tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please make sure you watch the next few in this series as it's important that you understand how to maximize the entry, mid and exit phases of the corner. If you can, please sign up to our newsletter so you get notifications of whenever we release a new video and I'll see you next time.